Sometimes you can't beat the classics. Not the most refined pair of boots in my collection. Uh, maybe even a little crooked here and there. But you can't deny you need one of these in your boot collection. G'day, welcome back to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I work and live on, the Wajit people. Now, this was my 35th boot uh, from when I started collecting boots in earnest in March of 2020. I, I bought this pair new from eBay in November of 2021 from someone who had bought the wrong size. In those days, all the boots I bought were relatively cheap or somewhat used on eBay. So I kept my overall spend low at the time. You can do it if you're careful and diligent and looking over the product. I don't wear these that much anymore at least, but whenever I pull them on, I ask myself why I don't actually wear these more often. And they do elicit compliments when I have them on. So this is the uh, plain toe blacksmith boot from Red Wing and is the uh, brother of their more famous Capto Iron Ranger. You can check out my review of my early purchase Iron Ranger up here, and I'll leave a link uh, to Red Wing's Heritage Line website down below for you to have a look at. This makeup is in their copper rough and tough leather, tanned by their own tanning company, SB Foot. It is a six inch boot, uh, what would you call it, a, a service boot, or uh, more probably a bulbous toe work boot. <laughs> It is a plain toe boot and the quarter panels are stitched to the vamp with the Red Wing Puritan stitch where all three stitches are stitched at the same time by the Puritan machine uh, with the center stitch in white. The plain toe is built on the same number eight last as the Iron Ranger. So you can see a, a distinctly similar bulbous toe box and a toe spring. But visually, it's probably less of a clown shoe because the toe box is not emphasized by a toe cap. At the back, unlike the Iron Ranger, there's a single piece backstay strip with an integral heel counter. At the top of the shaft, the collar is straight and rolled, unlike the Iron Ranger, which has plain cut leather edges that sort of slope down. Using the open Derby lacing system, there are four eyelets, three speed hooks. I'm only gonna do a brief reminder of Red Wing and the construction of this boot. So if you wanna take a, a, a more detailed dive into history and construction, Check out my original review up here. Now the brand, Red Wing, is one of America's oldest surviving shoe companies, founded in the town of Red Wing in Minnesota in 1905 by Charles Beckman. It is still a family-owned company owned by the Swayze family, who are no relation to Beckman, but who gained control of the company in 1920 when J.R. Swayze, uh, the general manager, bought its stocks. In the late 20th century, uh, American workwear and Red Wing work boots in particular became stylized fashion in Europe and Japan. And then in 2007, Red Wing started Red Wing Heritage as a separate branch from its more modern Red Wing work boots. Today, it's a vertically integrated company, including owning SB Foot Tannery and their own shoe stores at the retail end. The blacksmith was redesigned from boots originally sold to and worn by farmers uh, and uh, metal workers. It was first launched by Red Wing as a work boot for metal workers, protecting their feet from sparks and molten metal, but also being capable of being polished up and worn out at night. Copper Rough and Tough is an oil tanned oiled nubuck. It starts as a full grain leather that's oil tanned and then very lightly sanded to remove the top grain structure without creating too much of a fibrous nappy surface, like say, um, you know, the famous Timberland Newbuck boots, which is quite furry. <laughs> um, it's then finished with an oil tannage to give it a slightly waxy surface. All Newbucks and rough outs are theoretically tougher than smooth full grain leather because the looser fibers on the surface don't show nicks and cuts as much. Tanned in this way and in this copper color, it looks and feels ready for rough and tough use. On this boot, it's a healthy two millimeters or so thick. Uh, you can watch the original review I, I pointed out earlier for a full and detailed explanation of the construction. But the highlights are that this is a Goodyear welted boot. The uh, insole and uppers are stitched to the inside edge of the welt. Uh, that's this 
thin strip of leather going around the edge of the boot. Uh, and then the sole is stitched to the outside edge. Goodyear welting is water resistant because no stitches go uh, all the way through from the outside to the inside. Goodyear welting is also recraftable. Your cobbler can uh, just cut the outside stitches, peel off and replace the outsole uh, when yours wear out. In this case, this is called a 270 degree welt, meaning that, as you can see, it only goes around the front three quarters of the boot. Now don't worry, the back end is secure too. It's glued and then nailed together and really, take my word for it, totally secure. Most of the uh, boot uppers are double stitched for strength, uh, but I mentioned the Puritan triple stitch earlier. Red Wing uses an old Puritan machine which has three needles stitching this triple stitch at the same time. The thread actually spools through a vat of wax so that it all stitches through the wax uh, and seals the holes. The outsole is from Vibram, famous Italian sole manufacturer with factories in America. This is rubber and is called their 430 mini lug sole, 430. Vibram are famous for inventing the Caramato lug sole boot. Uh, the lug pattern consists of a series of radiating lugs and a number of cross-shaped lugs in the middle. The 430 takes exactly the same pattern but reduces the height of the lugs and brings them inboard so that in profile, the outsole looks flat and could pass as dressy <laughs> or at least citified. The heel uh, looks like but it is not one piece with the sole. It is actually a, a separate rubber heel that's glued on and then nailed to the sole. The vamp is lined with a canvas material inside but the shaft is actually unlined. The tongue is semi-gusseted up to that first speed hook which helps with keeping out dirt and moisture. The rest of the boot uses mostly natural materials. Uh, it has a veg tan insole inside, cork filler between the insole and the outsole, uh, a steel shank between the heel and the ball of the foot for, for stability. Uh, and I think it also uses a leather heel counter sewn inside the boot and covered by a suede cover on the inside. There's a short leather heel pad that protects your feet against the nails in the heel. Like the Iron Ranger, there is actually no midsole. Now some people say that this is because of cost some say that it's to be more flexible, which it is. Now, getting to how it has worn in the last nearly three years. I did wear this a lot in the first year of ownership, at least once a week. But since then, I've really fallen down in uh, keeping it on my feet as my collection has grown to over a hundred pairs of boots and always with new boots to review, uh, keeping those in rotation as well so that I can bring you what they feel like on foot. I think that if I were able to tot up how much I've worn this, I'd have to be honest and say that in the three years, I've probably worn it the equivalent of around a year's wear. Be that as it may, how have they worn? Well, firstly, they were easy to break in. I think because the rough and tough leather is actually quite supple, uh, being oily, and the Red Wing number eight last is roomy at the toes. You can see from the shape of the toe box that it's uh, in a, like a Munson-like last. Uh, if you don't know, a Munson last is an anatomically shaped last where the inside edge is straight, rather like your big toes. And most of the curve into the round toe is from the uh, little toe side of your feet. The leather insole was hard to get used to though. If you actually look inside, you can see the thick insole and its edge is clearly visible, which means that your, the edge of your feet will feel it. This has definitely softened with wear and the, the shape of my feet have pressed into it so that it's a far more uh, comfortable feeling now. But in the early days, I was tempted to, and I did, put in a thin foam-backed leather-topped insole from Echo. Uh, once the whole boot broke in, uh, within about a month of almost daily wear at the beginning, I then took them out. I still have one pressing issue. Uh, on the inside of this seam, between the quarter and the vamp, uh, the inside of it is actually quite thick with the, with the leather and, the, and then the canvas lining. It, it doesn't feel like it's been skived. I still feel it pushing in against the inside of my foot there uh, and the right boot, uh, boot in particular. Over time as the uppers and the leather insole softened or at least uh, molded to the shape of my feet, they have become comfy underfoot. Not my most comfortable boot, but I have no problem wearing these all day. And in fact, I, I did spend three days on a mine in the north wearing these all day and all night without any problems. Having said that, most of my wear has been in the city. Uh, on tarmac, concrete, pavements, carpets and tiled floors, maybe grassy lawns. 
Um, the heels and outsole, as you can see, have hardly worn, although the corner of the heel there is, is definitely showing some wear. Uh, as for the patina, this is probably the most exciting part. I have conditioned these twice in the last three years, with Big Four both times, and I sort of regret it because while the Big Four did not darken the colour, it did deposit more of the waxy surface on it, and there are parts that I think maybe look too shiny. When it first came, it was an oily matte, and you could see that it was Nubuck. The variation in colour, however, that has been fantastic. As you bend the leather during wear, and as pressure is applied as you walk and twist in it, the depth of the oils change and the dark brown versus copper tan starts to come out. There are a couple of scuffs uh, in the heels and, and toes, but no real damage. The top of the vamp is quite badly creased. I don't mind it myself, but some people might find that quite ugly. In terms of QC, it's as good as it was when I got it. That's a slightly backhanded compliment, because when I did get it, there were loose threads galore that I had to burn off. Uh, there was a slight misalignment uh, of the quarter panels, but they're a lot less noticeable now as the boots and leather have collapsed and creased. Starting with those issues, it hasn't got any worse, so that's a plus. So, in summary, I do love the Americana uh, early 20th century aesthetic of the blacksmiths. It really is a classic design and in many ways a classic boot overall. This is the kind of boot you draw when you're thinking of a boot. As a large factory manufacturing company, that con construction wasn't refined, you know, there were a few misalignments. But overall, I guess you buy it because it's built like an old work boot, not a dress shoe. Comfort and wear, well, comfort is okay, not the best. Shock absorption without a midsole and with the hard mini lug rubber. Mm. But the patina coming out is beautiful. Can't go past that. As to value, I, I bought these for a couple of hundred dollars Australian. Now they sell for 330 US dollars. In Australia, they are 595 Aussie when new. Not the cheapest in Australia. In the US, a really good price despite the factory-made nature of them, uh, considering the newer brands like Grant Stone, Oak Street Bootmakers and so on, sell for at least that or more. Uh, Value-wise, I can't see them falling apart for a few years of everyday wear, um, so they should end up being something like $50 to $100 per year, which is pretty good. Would I buy another pair? Not right now, but if I didn't have one, I think I would, yeah to add it to my collection. Anyway, that's my catch up. What do you think? If you like the video, uh, please click on the link below. And if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe? I put out weekly videos reviewing boots, often in great detail, and I also review boot related gear. So click on subscribe and stay interested. Until then though, take care of yourselves and see you again soon.